Hi, everyone. I've got a lot of people to admit, so I was taking a few moments. Hello, can you all hear me? Uh, I can hear you. Hi, Laura. Um, I'm I don't know if you saw my email, but I'm probably not going to be speaking too, too much tonight. I'll chime in, but I'm going to try to go through the text. My mouth is uh, in a bit of pain. <laughs> Uh, oh, 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 dear. OK, so you may be uh, entering things in the chat is what you're saying. Uh, yeah, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. But from time to time, I may choose to do that. So, OK, so no, no problem. So we have a lot of a lot of people. So welcome, everybody. And this is the Zoning Revision Committee meeting. And the first thing I'm looking at, I know we have Connor. I know we have Jude and. um. So I'm not sure whether, let me see where, who else we have here. Oh, and we have, and we have the press. We have Nick Henderson. So yay. Um, I'm going to mute for a moment and find out because we're expecting a few other people. So I'm going to mute for a moment and get status. Okay, so we do have our quorum. So our quorum for the Zoning Revision Committee is Jeff Collins is on, Jude Salato is on, Connor Wenk is on, and of course I'm on, Laura Ricky, I am the chair of the ZRC. So um, uh, some quick history and then we're gonna get into business. So some quick history is we are working on the short-term rental law and we did spend, uh, we did hear from the Woodstock STR task force in the form of Kai from the county who walked us through, he did the bulk of the writing of the report that came from the committee. And so he walked us through that. We had the uh, Wishnock Housing Committee talk with us about some of the needs and also Granicus. And then we had the Wishnock STR Association speak with us last last time we met. So we're, we're going from that. Now we also, and there was a question, Linda, I did see your question about uh, people's input. And we think the answer is going to be Facebook. It is not yet set up, but we do want to have a Facebook place for people to input. So I did speak with the supervisor about that. He did think it would be possible to do it on Facebook. So it's not there yet. But in terms of having people get a chance to document thoughts and have them be visible to people. So um, and let me just make a note here. So it's not set up yet, but that that is the thought that we'll do that. So um, in any event, so tonight, tonight's meeting, since we've had the listening phase, uh, tonight's meeting is going to be the ZRC members talking through uh, our thoughts. And so, and, and what I will likely do, I'm still admitting people, and, and we are recorded, of course. So what I will likely do is at the end of this meeting, and we, we like to keep it to an hour, but they often run to an hour and a half. I will stay on. I'm, you know, the, town, the the zoning revision committee members I think are good for about an hour and a half. But if people do want to talk for a bit afterwards, I'll stay and take notes of of what you say. So in any event, we'll see how many people do want to speak. But we'll have public be heard at the end. And anything we discuss today, any you're you're watching. I guess the sausage making in progress. We'll say. And what I mean by that is. We're going to be sharing our thoughts. I'm going to be making notes of everybody's thought of the ZRC's thoughts. They're not cast in concrete. This is kind of like we're embarking on the discussions. So um, whatever we do tonight is not the final answer is the beginning of the answer. So I just want to say that. But 
we do want to accept feedback as we go along. So all that being said, um, so for the first part of the of the meeting, it'll be the ZRC members speaking, which is Jeff, Jude, Connor, and myself. And um, what I had thought that we might do, we have three documents that I think would be handy. Well, four, depending on how you count. We have the Woodstock STR law, which I thought might be a good thing for us to walk through. I've done some highlighting of things on it and talking about what do we like and what do we not like? Because we've heard from a lot of people and we might just look at the law and say, what areas do we think need more work? I also have a copy of the Hurley law. A while back, we thought the Hurley law would be handy. It's got a lot of good stuff. It's different from the Wichita law in that it only allows STRs in owner occupied. So I know that there are gonna be people that um, aren't so happy about that. And, um, and then we've also got, um, we have the document that did come, come from the uh, Woodstock STR task force where there are some definitions in there. I think we're gonna wanna work out what are our definitions. There are a number of things to work out. What are our definitions? When we get things defined, what do we, th what do we want to do about it? Like the non-owner occupied, the owner occupied and um, talk through some of those. So I don't know whether between Jeff and Connor and Jude, um, should we start with the Woodstock law and just start walking through it and just let people, uh, go ahead, Jeff. I, I think we're diving into details really quickly if we go to the existing law as opposed to yeah. the objectives that we'd like to see within the law. Because we haven't okay. discussed that. We don't know what our overall objectives are and like to kind of just understand what those are before we say, how, would, how do we achieve those object objectives? Okay. Um, I'd like to piggyback on that too. Um, I think Jude sent over a very nice uh, list of uh, points to hit. I think it would be a good thing to maybe scoot through that and get some quick impressions because all of the information you mentioned and the documents you mentioned have in, informed our, you know, uh, our budding, uh, our understanding of the situation. I just feel like going through that list might be a good idea. And the only other question I had was, um, do we want to wait to the end of the meeting or would it be a quick thing to get the scenic overlay update out of the way? Well, okay, so we'll do, we'll do that quickly. Um, I will do that quickly. Let me go back to, I'm looking at Jude's email. So the scenic overlay, um, where it is, it's, it, it's with the town board. And there was some verbiage that Supervisor McKenna asked be changed, and it had to do with verbiage with what gets um, with who's does does the does the building department set the penalty? And we wanted to avoid the building department actually setting it, but put some some verbiage in there. So he's got some sample verbiage. So I need to get the sample verbiage from him. I need to get it back in and have the ZRC look at it. So that's where it is. Is we're looking at a paragraph in there that we're looking to change. So and and, um, and, and, it, and just only other question, that's fine. Um, but it, do we have a rough idea of when that might be expected in? I, I will try to certainly get it in before we meet the next time. And I will try to get it in even sooner. I will be meeting with Bill tomorrow and I might I, I'll, I'll try to add that to my list to make sure that I get it locked down so I can get it out to you hopefully this week. That would be wonderful. Thank you. So, OK. And Jude had a question. So. When you're talking about, you're talking about setting fines, is that what you're talking about? Isn't that normally something the town board would do? Uh, well, we, so we, we had some verbiage in the scenic overlay that said that the building department or the zoning enforcement officer would set fines up to a certain amount. So we had the fines in there, but we were leaving some latitude to the zoning enforcement officer rather than giving clear direction. Okay. So, so, the, so Bill thought that we should give some more clear direction. Got it. Thank so, you. So, that, so it's only like one paragraph. Uh, so it's not a huge change, but one paragraph in that area. And Jeff has his hand up. Uh, Jude, if you sent an email to my Woodstock at NY, I didn't get it. I don't read that email address. Okay. So there was an email that Connor just talked about with. with I think I sent it to your Gmail. Did I not? Okay. I don't know if he did or not. When did you send it? I'll take a peek. I'll take a peek. Okay, thanks. Yeah, it's your woodstockny.org. So, Jeff, I'll forward it to you right now. Sorry. Okay. No okay. And, and I'm forwarding, and you're uh, the last, uh, or the Gmail. So I'm forwarding the last thing. Uh, Jude, you sent it at 5.29 p.m. today. 
I think Connor sent a reply and I replied to Connor. Oh, uh, okay. So there's a, uh, and of course the cat, yeah, and I'm, I'm not seeing Connor's reply in there. So I'm just sending Jeff it, what I've yeah, got. Yeah, it's no, no big deal. My only uh, addition to her list, which was great, thank you, Jude, was that just to talk about the overall cap as a percentage of uh, rentals as opposed uh -huh. to just the districts. Oh, right. So I see Jude's answer. I see Jude's answer when I just forwarded it to, to Jeff. So um, I'm a screen sharer. So I am going to share my screen so that we're all looking at the same thing. But before I do that, I'm getting smarter about this. I do close down a couple of things before I share my screen. Do we think Ed's going to come tonight? Excuse me? Oh, what think, did you say? Do we well, think I, I was going to try to, I tried to call him just now and I did get his voicemail. I didn't leave a voicemail, but I got his voicemail, but people were joining. So I didn't want to spend too much time away. So uh, I don't know if he's coming and I got his voicemail. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're, you're welcome. So I will share my screen. And I'm just going to share the one. Well, I sh actually, if I share the whole screen, then I can go different places with it. Um, okay. So uh, this is Jude's list. And we'll go through it. I hadn't actually gone through it yet. Uh, and if I may, I, I want to add one more thing, Ju I, just to get like a sort of snap impression of the board's uh, feelings on hiring Granicus in any capacity. I'm not saying like get too granular about it, but just, you know, maybe just a sort of snap impression as of right now, favorable, unfavorable. Well, remember, we could hire Granicus for any number of things. The county yeah. is the county is hiring Granicus for some things. And so we certainly want to take advantage of whatever the, the county is hiring Granicus for. Um, I, I really only talked to Bill about Granicus, but uh, I mean, I think it makes sense to hire Granicus to help us with uh, with with the enforcement pieces, with, with the verifying who is um, who, who is out of compliance. So where they can yeah, say something I, is, is, yeah, as far as writing the law, I think that we're doing that ourselves. I think the consensus of, and certainly my, my advice, you know, my plan is the CRC will give a proposed law. My plan is not to go to the board and say, hey, can we hire Granicus for the law? My plan is that the CRC will come forth with a proposed law. So I do think we want to have, have Granicus help us with enforcement, uh, but writing the law, I think we well, want to do ourselves. Well, well, like I said, if we could just tag it on the end of her list, uh, just so that we can hear it from the board, I'd like to hear what Jude and Jeff's thought. Of course, Ed's when he when he's here. When you say you want to hear from the board, you're talking about the ZRC. Yes, yes, the ZRC. Oh, cool. Okay, okay, um, okay. And I think that what I stated is what I thought I heard from the board, but uh, having them having everybody uh, clarify that is a good idea. So I'm going to do a forward because the way I, uh, it's a good way to document what we need to document here. So I'm by doing a forward and then let me, there we go. And I'm just gonna write, uh, so so we've, I'm just putting your stuff here, Connor. Uh, can be a percentage of housing specific numbers. That's one of your things, Connor. And then also uh, Ranicus. Ranicus. Um, okay. All righty. So uh, your stuff's kind of at the top of the list. Um, well, can, can we go through your things, Connor, as long as we're at the top of the list, or would you rather uh we... Um, absolutely. And the only thing I just wanted to uh, illuminate for in the when it comes to the percentage of housing mm -hmm. uh, was, and of course, I, I pose this to the board is the impression that I've gotten from most of the documents we've gone through and the presentations that we've been shown um, is that what is a more standard percentage of rentals? to mm -hmm. put towards these what are ultimately full bedroom houses uh and i'm i know we're gonna iron out the vernacular but the idea of a house that is not being lived in 
is off the market, unavailable for long-term rental because it is primarily now an Airbnb. And that number uh, seems to be around 1% Mm -hmm. in most areas. And I Mm -hmm. think that's the total on non-owner, owner-occupied. Now, I, I know that down there we're discussing how many days of the year and all that. But just bottom of the line for me, you know, based on what I've heard, I feel that if we were to go with 2%, that would be, again, double the average. Uh, So I am thinking that against the later bullet points of are we allowing people to, you know, who snowbird to rent for two months and then anything over that, you know, you have to get a permit for. Uh, outside of that, you know, and with those yet to be considered, I think we should be looking at a number that is around that one to two percent of available rentals to go towards this, what we are loosely defining as non-owner occupied or full house short term rentals, full home short term rentals. Okay. And And let me just make a statement. I know Jeff's got his hand up, but let me make a quick statement. So I think that our percentage may be different depending on whether it's owner-occupied or non-owner-occupied. We probably want to have a different number, but in any event, uh, Jeff, why don't you go ahead? I think that before we get to this level of that, we need to distinguish, we need to have a distinction in our mind of the types of um, STRs in town. Because it gets gets really complicated Mm -hmm. talking about well, we mean this percentage of it's this, or this percentage of it's this, this percentage of it's that. Well, what is what are those things? And yeah. I think you need to define those things. I mean, to me, we've talked about this in this committee a number of different times, and I think that we've come to the kind of a, I won't say consensus, but maybe a, a beginning of a consensus that there's three types of, of, of STRs that we're looking at. One is whole house, meaning the entire premise is being rented at once. The second one is owner occupied, which is more like a, an old bed and breakfast kind of a thing where some, the owner is physically there during the rental of the SDR. And the third one is a snowbird, which is that there's a certain number of months a year that you can do it um, if you're out of town. Okay, and I think those three distinctions are ones we've talked about. I think that if if we need to to make sense going forward, we should understand if that's what we want to define <coughs> those particular mm-hmm. things. Because otherwise, we're going to be going back and forth about, well, this is this, and this is this, mm-hmm. and this is this. So I think the first step is, sure. is this the kind of definition that we want between the differences in STRs? Because I think we feel very differently about each of these. I think the whole house is the one that is the most restrictive we want to have. I believe owner occupied may not be so restrictive. I believe snowbird may be even less restrictive. So unless we define what that means and define our categories, talking about percentage it makes no sense. Because well, all I because I agree with everything you said, Jeff. No notes on that. The only thing I'll say is that from all the just again, I'm taking everything we heard. And saying that, you know, when I look at the whole house, owner occupied and snowbird, and I'm not saying we're there yet. Again, we're not working in cement just yet, but owner occupied, as we've come to maybe think of it as either a presence on the property or a presence in the home, could in theory be much more liberal. And a snowbird could be completely uh, universal. The idea, and Holly in the chat, um, I'm not. Uh, saying I speak for the board, but Snowbird, what we're talking about is the idea that if someone were to go away for, let's say, art for argument's sake, two months out of the year total, that and they live full time in the in the uh, home the rest of the year, that that would be what we would consider the Snowbird. We may come up with a better vernacular for it, but the idea is. A season, someone who escapes seasonally for less than, say, a quarter or a third of the year. And probably a better term is seasonal instead of snowbird, because snowbird implies they're going to be gone in the winter if they could be gone. That's totally, totally. So seasonal might be a better term. Okay. 
And, and I would say I I I like the idea. Oh, I'm sorry, Jude. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You, I'll wait. Yeah, I, I do. I do think that the three types makes a lot of sense. Uh, I know Kingston had three types, and I'm trying to remember what their three types were. That's um, what I was going to say. Yeah, and I, I actually do have it right here. I, 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 Jude, what is yeah. it, Jude? Yeah. No, I was just going to say I know what they are. Um, one of them is that whole house rental, which is where their percentage limit is. Mm -hmm. One of them is they don't call them owner occupied. I think it's owner on premises, and and I think pretty much what that means is you're renting a room in your house that you live in. Um, they don't allow any STRs in ADUs, period. Um, so owner it would be owner on the premises would be a room in your house. Um, and then they had another category was, which was you rent for less, you do a short-term rental for less than a total of 30 days a year. Those were the three categories. I'm, I'm good at those categories. I, I like the way that they're defined. I'm, yeah, I'm well, very happy with that. You know, the other thing is when, when you're talking about seasonal rentals, you know, this is this used to be pretty common in Woodstock, but people would rent their house for a month at a time, which you are allowed to do. That's not considered anything over 30 days or 30 days or over is not considered a short term rental. So, so I mean, I, I'm happy to go with what your definitions were from Kingston and just let's if we can define that and we can move forward with those definitions, I think we can start making progress. Yeah, well, I'm going to, I, 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 have, I, have, I have the feet right in front of me. So let me just, I just type in here. So the word that, 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 that what Kingston used. Um, Owner on put, premises. Owner on premises. So well, well, no, no I, well, I've, got, I've got this from the newspaper, so they, which, which is usually pretty correct. They, they use the word full-time short-term rental. They say there's a full-time, two different annual price points. They refer to a full-time short-term rental, a limited STR, and resident-occupied STR. Can I use those terms or do you want me to use something? I, I don't like the full time because full time could imply that the owner is on premises. It doesn't imply. Oh, no, the, the, no, this is the whole house. The whole house, the nine owner occupied. Yeah, but the whole the, house to me is more descriptive. It's the okay. entire property. Okay. All, so. so I, mean, I mean, I could do whole house full time. Okay. I, so I, whole I, house, I would, entire property. See that brings up another that brings up see, that brings up another question, which is um, our law now says you can only do an STR for a certain number of weekends per year, right? Is it twenty six? Correct, correct. So we don't want to say full house, full, full whole house, full time because I don't know that we want that. Right. I mean, these are all questions we need to kind of sort through, and but it's good we're getting them out there. I'm I'm fine taking off the full time. I mean, it's it's really we, I, we know what we mean we mean the we mean an entire property is. In I mean, it, just to keep us grounded and as we discuss this, I think keeping non-owner occupied in the descriptor will help keep focus on this. The idea being that uh, either that or no tenant, because the the purpose of the distinction is to say that nobody lives there. Right. No, I, right. I, I, we have this, is, this, this is nobody's private. This is nobody's primary residence. Exactly. Right. Is I'm just going to write that down. Except okay. we do have people who rent their whole house. Who it's their second home. It's not their primary residence, but they'll say they live there. You know, it's, these are all like the, uh, the where it's going to get tricky in the definitions, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think that if you say it's somebody's primary residence, that could be someone could claim it a primary residence. And I don't, well, think, we want, I don't think we want to allow. So type one is whole house, entire property. I think everything else that we call we, we put there is subject to, to interpretation. OK, so I might take out this is nobody's primary residence. OK, yeah. the um, OK, so whole house entire property what we've been referring to is not owner occupied the other distinction that i believe came out of some conversations was you might be renting out your, an entire adu but if you're living on the if you're if you're the primary resident and you're in the main house and you're and we have to decide whether or not adus can be str but hypothetically speaking if an adu could be an str we're saying if the owner if the owner's living in the main house and even though it's a full ADU that they're renting out, 
they're still owner occupied because they're on the property. Is is that so? We're saying owner occupied means the owner is somewhere on the property. No. no. Well, I, 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 yeah, no. I think I think it would be more because we're not, we would have to get down to determine if that's even in bounds because I don't think we were considering that you know that an ADU could be used as an STR. So but the entire property means the entire lot. It doesn't mean the dwelling. It means the lot that you have. So right. Well, we you, see. So entire property does includes, you know. Well, well, people aren't going to. So we have to decide. We have to, you know, owner occupied. I, I guess my view, and I'm going back to some things that Jude said, although I'm probably not saying the exact same way that she would that she would have said it, but you know, some of the idea of ADUs, for example, is if we have a property owner and they're having trouble meeting their taxes, the whole idea, the original idea of the ADU is it helps somebody who lives here and helps them pay their taxes because they have an ADU, they get some income. Right. And if, if 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 that ADU and what we are proposing that's not passed yet is the housing oversight task force law, which would allow a second ADU. And mm -hmm. we're saying, well, the second ADU could be an uh, could be an SGR, even though the first one couldn't, is what the current housing law that's not passed yet um, says. So theoretically, if an owner is living on the property and they've got a space where somebody can be renting, you're achieving that goal of helping that owner who lives there pay their bills. So I'm not sure why we're saying that, yeah, I'm not sure why we're saying that we wouldn't allow ADUs to be STRs and I'm not we're, sure. We're really all over the map here, Laura. Can we focus on one type of property at a time? But the ADU thing is part of the definition. So we were on definition. But, but we're still on whole house. Type. We're still on whole house, right? I mean, can we just really... <laughs> Well into well, that, and what that really means. Well, yes, that's what we, and that's that's what I'm diving into. Is a whole. If you have an ADU, is that a whole house? If somebody rents the whole ADU, is that a whole house? No, because whole the house entire the whole house, including every piece of property on it, everything on it. Whole well, entire, entire property. It, entire property is different from whole house. Entire well, property can, is what you can I can I jump in there and say that you know I think the idea maybe entire property we're getting our fit our a little wrapped around that is more again an extension of just nobody lives there so if it it like if if the purpose of this excursion here is to examine how the how STRs you know are you know actually living in like affecting our lives in the community now, then the essence of the entire property, just the, the language being there to me is to say that it cannot be long-term rented. And just to, and, and to expand on that and answer what you were saying earlier, Laura, again, why we might not say like either way, yeah, the property may, property owner is making money on the ADU, so why would we not permit it? Well, again, I think Jude had pointed out uh, in a previous meeting that it's not the government or our responsibility to maximize the profitability of private property. Mm -hmm. I do feel that it is in our case when we say things like, you know, the character of the community and things like the planning board, mm -hmm. uh, we talk about things like the integrity of residential areas. So again, just drawing this back to it's not about for me about saying like if, if we were to allow and incentivize people to build accessory dwelling units so they could become airbnbs to me that is in furtherance of again this high profit motive when the real calamity and, and issue at stake is, are things like homelessness and and a vacancy rate under five percent well, well, the thing about it is it, it would have a cap. So my thought is it wouldn't run, run rampant with it, but you know, we would consider caps for things. Yeah, but and, we, and, and anyway. Before we get in, I mean, we're, we're, we're diving into details here without defining what we're talking yeah, yeah. about. Right, right, Jeff, yeah, I, I agree. So I'm just saying that some of these things could be resolved with caps, That that's okay. But we can go on to owner-occupied. So if something is owner-occupied, clearly it's somebody's primary residence and, and, so that, what they, let's go, can we go back to, can we, do we all have consensus on what it means by whole house? 
Well, I, 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 I believe me, I me, do, yes. To me, what that means is that the entire parcel, no matter how many things are on it, is considered a single unit and it's the entire house. That's, a, that's the property. There, there could be ADUs on it, there could be accessory dwelling units, either external, internal, anything, but that property is one, <coughs> one taxed entity. Well, my, my issue with that definition is it's not normally the way, I believe it's not normally the way things are rented. I believe what's normally rented is dwelling units on a property. So I think it's my belief, I could be wrong, but my 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 assumption, which is even worse than a belief, I guess, but you know, I don't have facts to back this up. However, I'd be surprised if people are always renting their whole property. I'm believing they're usually renting a dwelling unit on their property. Right. And that that's a that's a separate thing. But I want we, there's multiple ways to look at this, right? I'm trying to define for this particular thing how we're going to handle it from an STR point of view. So we can handle what you're talking about in a different way, but we need to define, like, if you have, okay, even if there's it, multiple dwelling units on a property, how are we going to manage that? So that, but, to me, is the entire property. And I think that's a rare oh. case where somebody has multiple dwelling units on a property and they rent the entire property to one to one customer, so to speak. I, I would think that was, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm happy to make number one be entire property, but that number two has got to be dwelling units on a property because we have to address that. I'm, happy I think to I, I, I'm looking at it as occupying part of the property. Owner occupied to me, it's it's owner on premises, which is what the way Jude put it. It's owner on premises. Owner on premises means you could have three dwelling units on a property. If that same property has the owner on that property on that premises, those other two units are are under the classification of owner on premises. But but what I'm saying is I'm believing that, and I think I just lost something I didn't mean to lose. But what I'm saying is I'm believing that there's a different, um, these are different categories. Somebody renting their entire property, I believe is a different category than somebody renting, if they have three dwelling units on the property, they might just be, they might be renting a full dwelling unit. They might have, they might not live there at all. They may have three dwelling I, units. We're totally in agreement on that. We're totally in agreement on that. And that's why, we're defining one as the, the entire property and one as owner on premises. Owner on premises means that you have more than one dwelling unit on a premise and you're on the premises, but you have someone else that can dwell there, whether whether it's an ADU or whether it's a bedroom, it's the same owners on the premises. Right, and I'm adding this, I'm adding a fourth category where you're renting out a full dwelling unit on a property that has several dwelling units and the owner doesn't live in any of them. I believe there are cases uh, where- why, that, that, that's, I, why, I don't think that's necessary. I, don't um, but I believe that can be happening where you have more than one dwelling unit on a property and the owner doesn't live in any of them. I, but, so what do we but, do about but, that? But we can look at the definition of number one. The property is not anyone's primary residence. The entire property, non-owner occupied. I don't know why we took out whole house because I think whole house is really the kicker here the idea again and i really feel like this is the central thing is that the whole house and then the qualifier is available at at, at, all, at all times within the purview of the law uh available to rent as an str the idea is that the house as a lot as a unit is not uh, occupied by a prime by the owner or a primary resident like a long term tenant, and the um, excuse me and the whole and, and house uh, is not available for rent. That's really the bottom line. The house is not available to be rented. I'm sorry. That, say say again. The house is not available to be rented. Essentially, the property is not available to be rented because the idea here is that there's if, if you are renting your entire house and there is the oh, here's a, an example. If, if you're renting your whole house, the, your main building as an STR, uh, let's say it has five, three units in there and the right down the middle. Like, and you can rent all three for two hundred and whatever, 70 days out of the year. You have an ADU that's long-term rented on there. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't 
materially change anything. The ADU may not be available to rent, but the other three units are. So to me, if we're like, like he said, what I would add to number two is exactly what Jeff said, uh, owner or yeah. Oh yeah. Owner, because you can only STR if you own, you can't sublet mm -hmm. STRs. Um, own, uh, owner is on premises at the time of rental. You know, I think I, I could be wrong about this, but I think the way the law reads now is that you can't have a long, you can't be renting. And I know, you know, there's all sort of things proposed right now, but I believe the law is now that if you have, you cannot have a long-term rental and an ADU and a, and a short-term rental, long-term rental and short-term rental on the same property. I believe you're correct. Here. I, that's correct, right? That's probably, but, but it, do, do we feel any way about that? I mean, is there a reason for that aside from, well, I don't uh, know. What I guess reason? I, 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 you know, I, 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 I don't, I don't know why the reason, why, why it was put there, but it, but I believe that's what it is now. And I also think, you know, this is something else as we're talking, things are coming to mind. Um, you know, you can only have one STR, owner occupied, non-owner occupied. You can't own two properties in this town and STR both properties. Right, right co correct. So, so, that, I, so that's I, something we might want to throw in there. I didn't think to throw in there when I was making my list. Right, so, so any, any owner can only have one, that's correct. Right, so maybe we want to put that in there as another, um, just because, like I said, things are going to come up as we're discussing this. Um, Essentially, what you're saying is they can rent one, they can list one property, and then we'll have to determine like how many units per property, or if there is a cap on units per property. How that... you no, know, it's it's going to be a complicated question because you sure, know there are sure. probably also I'm getting distracted from our definitions. Uh, Fair. Well, I, do, I don't I don't know, though, Jeff, because, you know, there are some probably there are properties that are we would call them pre-existing. OK, I wouldn't say, you know, and that's something we might want to address, too, is things that are pre-existing and things that are being constructed. Like there are properties that have cabins on them, you know, and they've been around for 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 years. That's a different story than somebody now throwing up a bunch of buildings. So, you know, it just gets it gets a little complicated. And I. I think owner on premises is probably important to say. I think owner is another one. Um, I'm a little, you know, I think, I think we're gonna have to bite the bullet, honestly. And we're gonna have to decide whether an ADU can be an STR period. And that solves a lot of the questions that we're debating right now. But, well, well, I think not only that, but I'm not sure. It, it may say you can't have a long-term rental and a short-term rental on the same property, but I'm not sure. I, that would be our decision. I mean, we're talking about making the law right. So, if we were to make the law right, what would we decide as far as that goes? What, what if what if we do the following? What if we define number one as single dwelling on property? Okay, single dwelling unit on property. Entire dwelling unit is rented as an STR. Okay, that makes a pretty simple definition. We don't have to worry about ADUs or other dwellings or bedrooms. I just want to define something that's very simple to define. So any any single dwelling unit on property, entire dwelling unit is rented in STR. How do we want to handle yeah. that situation? I like that better than the property. You know, the property is a little just broad. And or entire property, sure, I guess. Well, well, we have uh, now we have not anybody's primary resident, single dwelling unit on property. That's why you, you don't need you don't need just nothing else. You don't we need get rid of this whole house. Know, well, yeah, get rid of that and the whole house and the property is not in the in which residence. We're already. Yeah, and I'm, the reason why I'm keeping owner owner occupied is that ties into the old definition. So yeah, no, I think that's help. I think I think that's helpful for now. I don't think you need the first part with the property. The only, I don't think you need the property is not anyone's primary residence. Well, okay. well, I think we're we're trying to help be clear about things. So the entire, because I think what we're, I think that is what we're saying is it's nobody's primary residence, and you're only having this dwelling unit be an STR. We can't define primary residence. 
Well, I define well, primary residence for me in a way that's legal. You can't do it. Well, so, well, I, I looked at the Hurley. I looked at the Hurley. Well, yeah, we can argue whether or not it can be enforced, but I thought Hurley had some good indicators of primary residence. They did. Yeah, but, I mean, do we want to say there is no long term occupant? I mean, I don't know how much water that carries, but I mean, well, the, I, we've, already, we've already said the entire thing's rented as an STR. Well, it, the entire dwelling unit is only rented as an STR. I mean, that's kind of what we're saying is that the um, that the uh, entire dwelling is only rented as an STR or if primarily. We're Primarily, because I mean, if someone comes there a couple, like if it's the opposite of the seasonals and they come in a couple months. How, how can you have a primary residence where you rent it as an STR? Well, I think that we had people that talked to us from the STR Association who said they actually have an address. Some of them, you know, well, is elsewhere. Is it New York City? I forget where all they said, but that they are in the Woodstock residence some sometimes. But it's not their primary residence. Their primary residence is elsewhere, and they want to STR the Woodstock residence. Then they're not here. So the owner is actually in the STR building, except for the times that they're not STRing it. So they can actually. I'm not be saying they can't be in the building, but I'm saying that the tire rent is rented as an STR. It's rented as an STR for any period of time at all. That's that's the classification here. Right. But, yeah. But that, uh, and, 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 sorry. Go, sorry, Jude. You. No, please. No, no. I think the key is the owner is not on the premises. Right? Well, but then we're yeah. getting confused with the seasonal. O owner is not on premises while STR. Well, but the, but I... in seasonal, the owner is not on premises when it's STR either. And the difference in my view is for seasonal, it is the owner's primary residence. And for number one, it's not anyone's primary residence. So I see that as being the big difference between seasonal, between one and three, the difference I see is, is it their primary residence or is it not their primary residence? If it's their primary residence and, and they qualify with other criteria, they can be called seasonal. If it's not anybody's primary residence and it's some corporation just bought it to do a revolving door, then then that's number one. Well, look, in the spirit of none of this being like totally cemented, I mean, I again, if it just to use the old verbiage for a second, owner occupied, non-owner occupied, and now what we're calling seasonal, I think that is a solid framework to like move through this list with and keep mm -hmm. coming back to these definitions to tailor them as we move. Because I know that some of these questions that Jude has posed uh, at, that we're all posing, you know, as as we've received all this information uh, mm -hmm. will, I think, make some of this maybe a little bit more salient and clear what, how we'll whittle it down. Okay. Uh, on, on number one, I'd be happy if we just said is rented as an STR for more than thirty days. Yeah. For shoot. more than thirty what? days, as out of the year. Uh, okay. Okay. I mean, again, we may come up with another number down the line, but you know, again, that that will attach it to the same time frame, and then uh, number three. Less than could be for less than three months. I was going to bring in. I like that thirty days because if someone goes away, you know, they, they go away on vacation for a couple of weeks somewhere else and they want to rent out their house. That's a different story than these ongoing. Well, it is, it, 30 seems strict to me. What I think, seems, most, I think, I think I'm sorry, go ahead, June. No, I just said, I said, that's what Kingston used. And that, that's more of an incidental, you know, I'm going, you know, I'm going to Europe for three weeks and I want to, you know, be able to help pay for my vacation. That's oh, incidental. So when you're but talking, your, well, your snowbird is probably gone for sixty or ninety days. Well, then they can rent for a month at a time. So I, you're saying as so each rental, uh, I, okay, I think I lost you somewhere. So what you're saying, number one, is each time you rent it, it's no more than thirty days. No, or you can only rent it for no you're, you're, a total of thirty days for the year. That's how many times you rent it out as a short term rental. You can as rent for more than thirty. You can rent for more than 30 days as many times as you want. You can rent for two months or six months or one month or 12 months. There's no restriction on anything. So, over so this is at a time. This is at a time. No, it's total. total. So, so can I ask, Jude, is would, like if, if we have, this is applying strictly to short-term rental. So the idea is in a world where we've hired Granicus to, switch, to, to scale the internet for us, for uh, listings and they come across a listing. So let's say we have one of our snowbirds here and uh, they are putting out an advertisement 
hey, we'd like to rent our house for three months. Mm -hmm. uh, as in like long term, like come and stay for three months. Uh, is that okay? Versus maybe saying the same Granicus person finds a listing that says we're gone for 30, we're, we're gone for two months that per, and we're looking to short term rent it. That person would be, you can rent it for 30 days as a short term rental. Could they then rent it another 30 days as a long term rental all at once? I'm wondering that. I was getting us getting really detailed. Yeah, I think, really I think, I think, but I think I think the concept is right. I think what Jeff said was right. Anything that you're renting for the year over 30 days is that's that whole house rental. That's the one that we want to limit the percentage on, right, Jeff? Absolutely. Okay. Well, so why, why, I, then. I agree with all of that. My issue is I think that when somebody is a seasonal person where the snowbird, we're using the term seasonal, when they live, when they leave the Northeast, I think they're leaving for more than 30 days. So I would feel more comfortable with something like 60 days, 90 probably matches more what they do, but 60 days, to I, me, 30 days seems very strict I, to say. I, I, it, I think that, I think the point, I think that we agree with you in general, but I think that that 60 days should go to a long-term rental as opposed to a 60 day rental, as opposed to multiple short-term rentals. Yeah, but, exactly. But you, but you said the thirty was the total rental of when you rent a when you yeah. add all the renters up. It, you, you've only rented it for thirty days. That's what I heard Jude say. When you add up all the days that you rented, it only you can only go thirty days. I it's said, not a snowbird. I mean, it's not a snowbird. Short, short, short term. So, in other words, if you're advertising an Airbnb, and you're going to short term rent a weekend here, a day here, or two nights there, it can be a total of thirty for the year. If you want to rent your house. For three months and they're 30 day rentals, you can do that. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. Right. But I do think, you know, I think I'm only taking this from Kingston's law that they felt like anybody who was doing a short term rental for less than 30 days, they weren't so worried about it because they understood that people go on vacation or they go, you know, whatever. And that's, as I said, I, I, I don't know a better word than incidental. It's not a regular occurrence. It's every now and again, and they may not even do it every year. Um, I think that's different than this continuous rental, a short-term rentals. Does that make sense? It does to me. Okay. I, I agree with you. It does to me. <laughs> Good. It might make more sense once we've done the seasonal, but to me, I think we're going to be conflicting with the seasonal, but we'll do the seasonal and I may still have a question, but I'll tell you well, what, we'll do the seasonal, then I'll let you know. We may, maybe we don't use seasonal. Maybe then we just get rid of that word and just say more than 30 days a year, less than 30, short-term rentals, more than 30 I, days I, a year, less than 30 days a year. Take away seasonal because, I, you know. I feel uh, like seasonal is a fine enough descriptor, but just for our purposes now, I do. does the board feel like we can start to tackle some more of these lists? Because I think, I think those last clarifying points really brought things into focus. We can probably start to, well, well, well I, I'm I'm not done yet. I'm still on two and three. So, okay. so item two, item two is owner occupied. Owner is on premises at the time of rental. Period. Oh. Is always owner is always. At the time, like, the, the, can you say sh at the time of the STR instead of rental? That time of, of STR. STR. At the time of short. -term, yes. Okay. We don't care about so, the long term rentals. We care. We we'll, we'll focus on STR. Right. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So seasonal. So tell me how you define seasonal. Seasonal is that you. Seasonal is that you 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 are renting for less than pick a number, ninety days a year, and it's a number it could be sixty days a year, whatever. And during that time, to me, I would like to see them. Do long term rentals only, meaning each rental must be three days or more. You can you see, you, you do you it 90 days. Go, go we ahead. Don't, we don't need to do that because it's already allowed. Okay, good. That's you can rent the for a month at a yeah. time. Yeah. Nobody can stop you from that. So that's why I say let's get rid of seasonal and just less, more than 30 days, less than 30 days. Well, well uh, okay. But, but you, but I'm still hitting on 
Jude, when I asked you is 30 days in a year, that's total. You said total. That's all you can do. Right now we say yeah. if you're doing if you're doing nine owner occupied, you can do 180 days in a year. But I hear you saying, Jude, saying you can only do 30. You're throwing out 30. That's all you can do in a year is 30 days. I'm saying that's a different that's a different permit. So there's well, a one permit if you're doing more than 30 days a year. That's the first category. That's the one that we have, we've said we have the most concerns about, right? Mm -hmm. And okay. then we're trying to give people a little leeway with the other category, which is, as I keep saying, sort of an incidental thing. Occasionally I take a vacation and I, you know, whatever, I go visit my mom for a month or something and I wanna rent out my house. That's different than somebody who's doing it on a regular basis. So they're two different categories. Not that we're limiting we're limiting the first one, right? That's the one we're talking. That's the main one that we're talking about. Yeah. It's, um, you know, houses that are primarily being used as short-term rentals for whatever day you, however many days you want to call it. And then, you know, I'm just taking this from Kingston because I thought it was an interesting thing that they did. They broke it down to this whole house idea or however we wanted to find that. They, uh, they did the same thing that Jeff talked about in the beginning, which is if you have a room in your house and you are on the premises, we don't want to restrict that at all. You want to rent a, right. rent a room, go for it. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe it's restricted in the sense that there have to meet certain kinds of criteria for safety and so on. But but in terms of saying, uh, we don't want you to do that, we don't have to do that. And then the third thing that Kingston did, which I thought was pretty interesting, and I haven't really seen it before, is that less than 30 days short-term rental in a in a 365-day period. And that is less of a problem because that's, again, I don't know a better word than incidental. Well, well, so, okay. So, a couple things. so, okay. so, for, so, so, first of all, uh, owner is own. Okay, so owner occupied. I think that what we've is this a place to say does it have to be a bedroom in your house because we're not saying we're allowing ADUs. So, I, if somebody's I, owner occupied, yes, I think for right now. Since we haven't really tackled that question, let's put that as yes. It's a room in your house that you occupy. Okay, so, yeah. so then, Sh shared dwelling. So, th so then take instead of saying owner is always on premises, say owner in same dwelling, because that's a different thing. Premises and yeah. we need to be clear. Premises and dwelling, right? We can we can also look at to see how some other like how Kingston yeah. defined it, you know, because. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of sample laws out there that we could look at. I mean, to me, item two, which we've now defined it, is the traditional bed and breakfast, right. which we have no issues with. Right. right? I don't think we want it. We have no limits. We have no desire to limit that. It's it's often mm -hmm. what this town historically has done. Yes. Right. Except bed and breakfasts are regulated a little bit differently. They are. I know. I understand. Yeah, but I understand what you're conceptually, saying. Conceptually, it's it's. Yeah. The same purpose. Yes. You don't have to serve them breakfast. You can just give them a room. Exactly. Yeah. Give them a muffin. Give them a muffin. Um, and them off the cafe. There you go. <laughs> uh, well, well, our current law, however, does. I'll take out traditional better breakfast because we're saying it's not really I, that. I, 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 I'm not. I'm not going with it. I just. I'm saying that philosophically, this is our our belief. This particular thing is something we don't have a problem with. Yes. And we don't necessarily. Right. If you're running better in the house. But right. but. Right. But know that our current law does have a definition for bed and breakfast and a different definition for yeah, STR, yeah. but that's okay. Yeah. All right. So so I, st so I still do. I know everybody else is, feels like this is very clear. To me, it's not clear because you got, if you're more than 30 days, you're here. If you're fewer than 90 days, you're here. Well, so what if you're between well, 30 days and more category now. There's one, before we get to that, can we do one more category after two? Let's call it three. Go, go to three. This is... Owner is in the same premises, but not the same dwelling at time of STR. Okay. And, do, and I'm just curious, why do we feel that's an important distinction? I mean, for number two, I... I don't know should, that it is, I, Connor. It may or may yeah. not end up with the same definition, the same thing, but I think we need to talk about it because we got we get, we get stuck in ADUs versus a bedroom, right? So we need to distinguish those in our conversation to say, what do we believe in ADU should happen? versus a bedroom should happen. Is yeah, that and, and I, yeah. I think we need this this because that's another thing people will do. They, right. they, they may have people, they may be on premise and we want people who are still on premise. We want people to live here. 
and they're looking for different ways to supplement income. And it may be a bedroom in their house, but it may be a building outside their house. Right. Yeah, so, and, that, and that's fine. We can totally circle back to that. I just think that like if someone does have an ADU and we're saying that it can't be used as an STR, which we haven't yet, but let's say we did say that. Uh, and they wanted to spend the night in there, but they're on the premises, like ready to respond to any complaint or emergency or whatever. I, I feel like it wouldn't bother me for us to this to be a part of number two as well. I, I think the distinction to me is that, that if it comes down to the number of ADUs that have traditionally been long term rentals. That are no longer long-term rentals. And I think that's a consideration that we need to talk about. Whether or not we regulate them differently, that's a different issue. But I think we need to at least have well, that discussion. I, I totally hear you. I, my concerns are about, again, things like enforcement, like how would we prevent someone from sleeping in you know, that building? But I, 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 I hear you. I totally do. Yeah. I totally I think, do. I, I, I agree. And I think, I think we should leave it like this for now. We got a lot to think about and maybe we should move on. Um, yeah, let's do it. You know, and the other thing is, you know, I know that we, we have some privacy issues and so on. I would just really be interested to know and if there's any way for us to find out. Because you know what I saw happening is, you know, I, I'd be driving around and all of a sudden this little building would pop up on somebody's property. And it was never meant for a long-term rental. It was always meant for a short-term rental. And that's something for us to think about um, in terms of old and new and pre-existing and how long something has to exist. And I guess we do that when we go down the list. But um, it's just another consideration, but I think we should move on and we're going to have to, we're going to have to okay. really think yeah. about these things. It's all, yeah. Okay. You know, yeah? Okay. okay. So, so this thing, I, I wrote this down because somebody said it, each rental must be 30 days or more. If somebody is a seasonal person, they're out of town for, for two months or, you know, are we going to require every rental, every, that they can only rent to 30 days or more? I mean, Why? Wait, what? I don't know where that came from because this is I, only in relation to short-term rental, and this we is not they, seasonal, right? Yeah, the, but even the seasonal definition is only in relation to short-term rental, and if right. it's so, 30, if it's thirty days or more, then they can do that. Yeah. We, that's so, so I'm just going to I'm just going to get rid of this then. Yeah. Okay. So the only thing I'm going to do is we got four types. We started out with three. We got four. We're good. We're good on that. And, I, I um, like to. I, I would like to add a note. I don't feel like we need to like discuss it right now or anything. But number four, asking renting for fewer than ninety days out of the year. I just wonder, you know, in the spirit of what this is supposed to be and what it's supposed to facilitate, do they? Can they? I mean, you know, ninety days is a lot of days through the year, and I feel like maybe these 30 it should be less about that and more like you have a window of 30 days to short-term rent your well, I, I might i might go for 60 but the thing is i think most people who are seasonal that leave are leaving for more than a month i, I, I think I mean, here's here's the what, what what i think we're trying to get to laura and maybe i, I get what you're saying so i thought within I'll 90 60. days i'm but 90 is fine 90 is fine so to me, 90 days total, of which only 30 days or less can be STRs. The, must, the rest must be LTR. But you can rent okay. your house for six months of the year, long-term rental. There's no restriction on yeah, how I don't you, can, you, can rent, you can rent your house as long as you want, if it's 30 days or more. So I just think we have to stick to what we think a short-term rental can be. Uh, so we basically, you're saying you don't, you don't need, I'm sorry? You're saying we don't need number four. I, I, I'm, saying, I, I'm, I'm saying I liked, I liked, <laughs> we gave seasonal as a, as an, as a, and I keep giving different things yeah. as an example, but I liked what Kingston did, which is you do a short-term rental for less than a total of 30 days a year. They're not so concerned about you. Right. And maybe we yeah. are, but we don't agree with Kingston. So calling it seasonal or something else, it's just less than 30 days, more than 30 days. They're different categories. And 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 if I could also add to this, like the again, let's ju let's just talk about what it means. Like if they can rent their home for, let's say right now it says sixty. It says if it's for sixty days out of the year, you know most of those are going to come on weekends. Now, if someone goes away for let's say sixty days again, because that's the threshold we're talking about, that is approximately eight weekends. If we want to count. Friday, so that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, times eight. That's 
24 days. But well, I'm saying a so, span of 60 days in the year. My thought is people might be going January and February, let them rent. But your point's a good point. If they only rent on the weekends and you add them up, now you can rent for like four months because you're only renting weekends. So I think it's and, and the only reason I'm making that distinction is just to say that I think that if you, if some, I'm just pointing out that if someone goes away for, uh, for 90 days for their snowbirding expeditions, uh, and then they rent their home every weekend during that time as a short term rental, then a total of 30 days will cover that. And I am, Pro and this is a little presumptuous, but I think it's fairly safe to say that if you're long term, if you're short term renting during that time frame and you can keep it busy and you're scheduling ahead, like that will supplement your income during that time pretty substantially. So I'm, I'm going to say we don't need four because four is four is already allowed. Seasonal rental is allowed, right? Well, well no, no, I don't think so because I think Connor's raised a good point. That people might not be well, renting. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish more, please. Sorry. Sorry. Go Seasonal ahead. rental is basically allowed, and we're also now allowing one, meaning you str for less than thirty days in a year. So a seasonal rental can end up being a couple of different ways in people's work how they do it. They can rent. If they're gone for three months, they can rent the whole thing for ninety days, or they can rent the whole thing for sixty days and an str for thirty days. All of those things, if we take away four, are allowed by the way they are. We don't need to. We don't need to just to, to, to just to have that as a separate category. If they STR, and this is going to Jude's point, if the STR for less than thirty days a year, that's an incidental STR, which might have its own license, but we're okay with that. Whether whether they do it as a snowbird thing or as a not snowbird thing, we don't care. Yeah, yeah. Oh, ultimately, yeah. It, you don't have to you know, go away. Yes. So they, I, they could be. They could be there. They could be they there could the be whole there. time. They, they could and, move into their buddy's house for a couple of days. Whatever. As long as it's less than thirty days, we don't care. Now, not to get, to get too far ahead. Not yeah, to get uh, too I, far ahead, but th like these are questions that, again, while I am not saying we, we forfeit uh, our ability to write this law, like understanding what Granicus has to offer in terms of this kind of thing, in terms of how we because. Again, enforceability. I that I I just wonder. Anarchist can tell us exactly who's renting STRs as long as they're using a platform, one of the seventy plus platforms they monitor. We, we can tell if they can do it for how many days they do it a year. We can tell. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean that, and, and and that's the thing because as we get more permissive, which I don't think should be necessarily a problem, we want to figure out how to facilitate this many days so it makes sense again. But, uh, you know, just uh, keeping in mind that, like, the more we allow to do, like, if people, for example, are going to be advertising weekends here and there and only a certain amount, uh, making sure that Granicus has offerings or that we know how we will uh, account for that. I just want to keep yeah, grounded. I mean, so so Granicus will track every short term rental throughout the entire year. They will know if someone has a limit of 30 days and it goes over 30 days and they can inform the, 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 the Z, ZOC or ZEO. So an yeah. And, and I suppose, yeah, incidental is a good, uh, a good word, I guess. Um, my only then clarifying question again for the board, not even just for now, but going forward is uh, if we're thinking of this as permitting types, versus just even statuses because while incidental you could argue might not require its own section or like a permit like someone could just you know you're allowed to do this under the law but i figure we do want it permitted I think they, need, so, I think they, need, they need to be permitted because they need to be inspected to make sure so, that it's, so yeah. in that way i guess i would say four should stay on there and, and, and the permit would be if we do permitting it would be a less 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 cost than a bullet than category one, right? And then, you know, now that I've brought all of this up, you know, you have to think about that. That could be, what is that? That's um, 15 weekends out of the year. I don't know. Um, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not really looking at the chat because we're trying to have a conversation, but I did see somebody say, how are you going to enforce this? And I'm, and so I'm going to weigh in on that because I think what's happened is, and I think what Kingston's doing, and I think what has to happen is that if, 
the fines are severe enough, I think it will dissuade people from of running illegal STRs. And I think I, I put in there that, you know, Kingston, the first time you run an STR, it's a thousand dollars, an illegal STR, it's a thousand dollars a day. The second time it's twenty five hundred dollars a day. And the third time it's seventy five hundred dollars a day. So I think I would think that would be fairly um I think that would dissuade people from running illegal STRs if the town actually did that. I mean, that's Kingston doesn't seem to be having, I think people are falling in line because who wants to pay those kinds of fines? And now that there isn't, you know, a service that tracks it, I think it's going to be harder to get around. I mean, right now, I don't think anybody's really watching too much in Woodstock. So anyway, I just want to throw that out there because I see saying, well, how are you going to enforce this? Well, it, it may be self-enforcing when people find out if they're caught, it's going to cost a lot of money. So, so I don't know if you guys have looked at what Granite is, is doing and can doing what the county is providing. We can do a quick thing enough because enforcement is a big deal. If you want to go there, I can I can do it. Otherwise, I can do it at a later time. Okay. Well, what let's I, do it later. This, okay. I, I'm sorry. I just meant to be a little conversational. Keep the that's thing. Fine, that's fine. I just that's but, why but, I asked if you wanted. Yeah. Well, well, let's. I think we can quickly do. So, what I added is, it sounds to me. I took some liberty here. It sounds to me like we have two choices when the owner is not on premises. Whether, whether you're STRing more than 30 days a year or STRing less than 30 days a year. And we have two categories when the owner is on premise. One is they're in the same dwelling because they're running out bedrooms or the other is they're on the premises, but not in the same dwelling. So or, I, yeah. feel like, I, I feel like that. we've clarified and I think that's helpful. And, and I'm yeah. happy because we got 30 days and 30 days and two of them, we don't have a gap. So uh, that sounds us. Um, I, feel, I like that. Uh, okay. It's a lot of conversation, but I think that's good progress. Definition, yeah. yeah. I, I think it is. I think the next one, number two, uh, unless anybody disagrees, I'm just going to say number two is okay, which means we all agree that. Um, the, uh, 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 well, just, just okay, this, this, this is tough to define and enforce. Right. And I, I agree with it in principle, but how do we enforce it with an owner's NLLC that we don't have access to the ownership? Well, well we, we need to ask question. for it. If something, somebody's an LLC, we need to ask for the ownership. Uh, the is is, I'm sorry, two people talking at once. I think, I think, I think Laura's right. I think you can say if you want to have an ADU here, we need to know who the primary owners of the LLC are. And if they don't want to give it to you, then they don't get the permit. Period. Right. I think okay. you can do that. Okay. We did yeah. have an we did have somebody come to the um the ZBA who was, you know, had an interest in two, and we had to say no, you can only have one. Yeah, like that. Okay. Uh, are, we, are we okay with what I put for number two? Yeah, for now, yeah. Okay. Do we want to tackle the ADU's question or we want to go down to what Jude did? I mean, I mean, I think, I think we, we polling the board. Uh, sorry, what? So ADU question is number three. Yeah, I number mean, three. Number four. It's number four. Got another turn. Granicus is number four, yeah. Do we yeah, want to talk about ADU's number I th I I think we should just poll people. For me, as of now, it's a no. For ADUs. To me, ADU to be press. to be STRs at all. Can ADUs be STRs? So we have one person that says no. Uh, do, do you, uh, Jeffrey Jude, do you guys have opinions on that? So I mean, I I'm part of the people, part of the group that wrote that the first ST, first ADU cannot be an STR. So I'm going to be a no. On but then the question is. We have a lot of people that are doing it already, and how does that affect? Well, so. also we and the law that we have been working on that we're proposing says the second ADU can be an STR. So are you saying, Jeff, you wouldn't want the second ADU to be an STR either? Uh, I have no problem with the second ADU being an STR because that makes the first ADR be required to be a, a an affordable an affordable rental. The only way you can the only way I could propose law that the second one can be an ADU is if the first is if one of the units is owned, one of but sorry, the only way that you can get the second EDU to be an STR under the proposed law is if the owner is living in one of the other premises, either the first ADU or the main house, mm -hmm. and the other unit is a long-term affordable rental. So mm -hmm. the idea that the this is this is the county, the county proposes to us. The idea here is that by giving them the second ADU as a short-term rental, we're also getting 
a long-term affordable rental in town. So the trade-off is one long-term rental affordable for one ADU. You can you, you can put two votes for that one because that's sort of yeah. If we're talk, I was talking about primary, like single ADUs because we haven't done the two ADU discussion really yet. But uh, that's my feeling on it as well. So you can mark me down as a second on that. Again, just going forward to discuss. Yeah. Great, I'm gonna go off on a tangent here. I don't think that people should have two ADUs. And I also think that um, it's near impossible. It's gonna be, you have this idea that you're gonna have a second ADU that could become a short-term rental. If there are permits available, That was that's one of the conditions I believe that was in there. And then the other thing is, um, I am going to just say I have no idea, and I don't think the town does either, how you could possibly enforce a single homeowner to uh, rent affordably. Uh, you know, you can say it, but, you know, the, the reality of that, you know, them finding a person, the person qualifying, the town making sure the rental is affordable, all through, I just think it's impossible. So for me, I'm just going to say no second ADU. And then the question of whether or not an ADU could be rented is a short-term rental. I'm still up in the air about it. Um, you know, when, when you think about some of the things that are going around now, with the home share and all that kind of thing, and the idea that, you know, if you are having, maybe you're older and you're on your property and you need to rent to help supplement your income, it might also be nice if you had somebody who was living there long-term who could help you with some of the upkeep, you know, help you shovel the walk or, so, you know, so there are benefits to having that be a long-term rental. And maybe the way we do that is by not allowing STRs. I, I haven't come down on one side or the other, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'm completely opposed to second ADUs on properties. Okay. okay. So I, I'll tell you my vote. Um, let me get this. Um, I'm sorry, let me get this in here first. Uh, my vote is actually yes and manage it with the cap. So my so that's my vote. Yes, but manage with the cap. On the first one, you're saying. We on the first one, yes. With the cap. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um oh, if we include first. if we include the single ADU as an STR, that is kind of equivalent in your interpretation, Laura, to item one above, meaning owner not on premise. So that'd be owner not on premise or owner not in dwelling. Um, I actually, hang on a sec. Um, okay, so let me just get my notes in here. So right. what, what I'm saying is so if the owner's not on premise at all, they can only get one ADU. No matter how many dwelling units they have on their property, they can only have one, they could only have one STR. So if they have more than one dwelling unit. Um, if they're not on premise less than 30 days a year, we're gonna have a different I'm, 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 I'm trying to I'm trying to I'm trying to not have multiple caps, right? So to to me then if we put a cap, whether it's percentage or number, on owner not on premise, which is where I think we're gonna go to. And it's probably going to be percentage. Then, if if you you know if if the idea that an ADU can be an STR, then that's part of the same cap. Is that well? well I, so I think it, I think this would fall under owner own premise, not in same dwelling. I think that the first ADU allowing the first ADU to be STR would be owner own premise but not in the same dwelling and we would probably put a cap on that because we don't want everybody having strs we want to have some long-term rentals i get that but is it the same cap is it is it a combined cap with single dwelling unit on property entire dwelling unit as an str probably it's different caps same. probably different caps we have different caps today for owner occupied and owner occupied we have different caps today so it, it would probably be a different cap okay i guess i don't really carry the way yeah. It so, it well, it may, it may be. Well, you know, I mean, I get, I, I get to have an opinion too, and that's my opinion. My opinion. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I, I think, I think you're playing <laughs> either way. I'm not, I'm not, I'm yeah. agreeing that I don't care. 
Your yeah. opinion's been fine. <laughs> and and my, opinion, my opinion's been the same as, as it's been. We've had a lot of conversations in the Housing Oversight Task Force meetings. That's been my opinion all along. I think the first ADU ought to be allowed to be an STR, but handled by the cap, not by some rule that says you can never do it. So that that's uh, my opinion. But but, well, but we're, this is all evolving. We're not going to be done tonight. So uh, hi, Jude, you had something to say. No, I'm not going to. Just let's move on. It, it doesn't okay. matter. Well, yeah. well, the next thing is, can, can we actually, I'm, I'm going to suggest, because I think there might be consensus that we can all, can we all agree then that the owner on premise, not same dwelling, can be an STR, but has a cap applied to it? Yes. Well, I'm not sure yet. Okay. 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 So I'm going to hear yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we'll let's add a quick question. I'm sorry to interrupt, no, but I know that we no, 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 Laura, please no. Yeah, no, because we're. Well, I'll, 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 I'll do public be heard at the end, and and even if everybody else jumps off, I will stay and listen. So I'll listen to you at the end. Um. Okay. So do we want to? I'm watching my clock. I think I heard people say let's do Granicus later. Do we want to try to do more topics now? Because we're kind of at ten of almost at ten of. We've been over an hour. We don't like to go with before an hour and a, beyond an hour and a half. Do we want to try to tackle any other questions or do we want to say, hey, we actually covered a lot tonight. Do we want to call it good or do we want to try to do more? Well, I think, I think I think one question on the Granicus thing, and this may be the question I'm not sure what Con Connor was looking for. The question is, do we want to hire Granicus to help us write the law? Is that one? Is that the question you're looking for, Connor, or do you want to so have Granicus to help us enforce the law? Because those are different things. Yes, you're they are. Here, you're muted. You're on mute, Connor. Connor, you have to come off mute. Sorry about that. Um, uh, it, I, I would say this is a polling question, really, on both things, just kind of like my last one can, uh, or the last one. Um, so if I were to kick this off, um, I would say, you know, I'm, a I'm not saying we have to hire them fully to write this law for us, but I am interested as we get further into the writing process and we have to get into the weeds about the, a little bit of the nitty gritty of enforcement and having them be involved in the conversation during this process, if not in a consulting manner, but having a line to them to understand how we can better tailor our law to a realistic set of enforceable expectations would be to our benefit. And then in terms of having them enforce it, as of now, I'm I'm certainly leaning that way. I'm a more solid yes than anything else. It's a question of where this goes and what they're capable of. But to me, the bottom line is uh, modern <laughs> modern problems require modern solutions, and the town of Woodstock just can't scrub the internet on its own. Yeah, and I would second everything you said. Everything that I wrote down here, I think I wrote down what you said. Um, I, I agree. Uh, if I wrote what you wanted. If, if I wrote what you meant, then I agree with it. Um, yeah, it's really just about making sure that as we are writing this, that we have maybe someone, if not them, but they're, I think, a good resource in this way to bounce off of and manage our ambitions and expectations with what they are capable of. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to word this to say, I have them input, review and input so much of the law that we write so we're not asking them to write the law, but we'll exactly we'll write like, it. you know, kind of like how we send it to the county, but just like at certain phases, it would, I think, be good for us to have them chime in just so, you know, like, ah, oh, you know, we can't actually do that. Or here's a gap in your thinking about, you know, that you might want to consider just I mean, you know, that's my yeah. I, I could see value there. And what I what I like about that is if we're going to be asking Granist, Granicus to help us enforce the law, which I think is, I think is a great idea, then if they have input to writing the law, then they can let us know if we created a law that they can't enforce. So exactly. they, they, kind of, they kind of go together. <laughs> so I, I like the idea of having them review it to make sure that we've written a law that they feel they can help enforce. So okay, Jeff, so and, we, oh, go ahead. We should then have them, they gave us a quote on writing the law, helping us write the law, which was a lot of money. We should try to get a quote on what, what it will cost to help them review the law for us. Well, yeah, get, get cost estimate sounds great idea. Yeah. Do you, yeah, not, I mean, do you sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, do you not think that they have a, a description of what they can monitor and what they cannot? 
Mm -hmm. you know, what, oh, uh, what, you know, doesn't wouldn't that be something that they probably could describe well, to us? Well, well, well they, they they do. And when we had the presentation, Urena did a fabulous presentation, you know, a couple of meetings ago. And I did send the, the PowerPoint out to everybody. And I think she's got a couple of pages that do describe what they do, what they do provide. So that's a good idea is we might be able to read through it ourselves and kind of figure it out ourselves by reading the things that they provide. And then we need to get clarification of what the county has purchased because there are different modules and we need to get clarification on what the county purchased. I can tell you all yeah. that if you want, but we'll do it later. Um, yeah, okay. the, uh, the, only, the only thing I wanted to add to that, the, uh, in terms of them having that, we I remember the presentation and they had mentioned that there were other tiers of more or less involved, uh, at, you know, uh, involvement on their part that were not included in the presentation. So seeing what's, you know, on the menu versus a la carte for them, you know, that kind of thing is definitely something we should look into. I do think maybe once or twice during this process, it might not be bad to have someone on the phone as we're doing this to make sure we understand the scope of what they describe. Because what they put on their website and, you know, what looks good and how they market it may, you know, we may want more clarity on. Yeah. So, so we'll do some more investigation. So, so Jeff and Jude, are you okay with how this is written for the Granicus line? No, I think we should get a cost estimate to have, or have a review. Um, I don't think we necessarily we could have them. I think I think the quote to help us write the law was like seventeen thousand dollars. I, mm -hmm. I think that was the quote. So right, I but think the review it would be hopefully less than that. Um, but but I, but I did write get cost estimate here. You said we should get a cost estimate. I did yeah. say I did say that at the end here. Yeah, I can would I you, can bolt I can bold it. Yeah. O only only thing I would do is maybe just it, at, it, after Granicus colon just put poll like we're polling. This is not a hard proposition or anything. This is obviously okay. something we're going to want to double back to. It's just I want to see where we're at now, and I'll be interested to see where we're at later. I don't want to speak for Ed. I don't think he agrees with me on this. Uh, he would share my votes across on this. But, you know, I'll be interested when he is here to see his thoughts on all this as well. Right. Well, I'm, go, oh, go ahead, Jude. No, I think that we should find out what the county is getting and what that what that's going to cover. And then I totally. think if we, if we if hopefully if we write a good enough law, um, they should be able to manage it. That's what they do. And I and I don't think we're the first ones. And maybe maybe that's a consultation. You know, I, I've spoken to the housing uh, director at in Kingston, maybe that's a conversation like what does how does Granicus handle these questions for you? And then maybe we don't have to pay somebody to tell us whether or not they can answer those questions. I think we might be able to find that out ourselves. Well, I, I do. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I do think that the county contract um, and Jeff would certainly know better than I would. But I, I'm guessing the county contract covers some of those tiers that were talked about. And when I asked the question when the Granicus person was here, when Urena did a presentation, and I said, is writing the law something different? And I thought he said, yes, writing the law is something different. So I'm I'm believing that's unlikely that the county has paid for Granicus to write any laws. I'm, I'm yeah, believing no, whatever, no whatever contract they've signed or agreed to, I'm believing does not include writing anybody's laws. I, right. I can think the idea was that they would have a certain amount of enforcement coverage if we were to go into yes. business. Okay. But the idea is that if we wanted more, if our laws were stricter in the town, that we may need to purchase some sort of supplemental package okay, to what really they I can give you the brief overview if that's okay. So, uh, it's okay with me. It's okay with everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be brief. I didn't hear what he said. What'd you say? Uh, I'll give you a brief overview of what, what so the, the previous Granicus contract with the county had Granicus tracking STRs throughout the county for Woodstock to find out which STRs were being, which 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 housing units were being str they had to actively ask the county every single time they wanted to find out who was who was renting STRs. The new contract with the county and Granicus allows each town to have their own login to that. So instead of asking someone to pull the data and give it to you, they can log, we can log into that and see who is STRing. And the screen shows the legal and the illegal ones. So you can see who's STRing legally, who's STRing illegally. That's the level that the county has so far. They've also given the Granicus money to help the towns buy down, to, to help buy down the cost for individual towns 
to get the additional modules. So the town can't get the next module, which would allow, I believe that will have, Granicus will actually generate enforcement letters on behalf of the town for those illegal STRs that they find. Yes. You're saying we, we would pay extra. We would get, we, we, we would get a, a discount rate, but we would pay extra. Correct. Is what I think I heard you say. Correct. And then the, the final level is that they send stuff to the, actually to the, to the enforcement officer and to the judge of who's done legal, illegal STRs with pictures and, you know, basically screenshots of the illegal STRs. So, it, so the enforcement is very easy and almost guaranteed to get a, um, a conviction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're, we're kind of like in the middle part of that. Um, so with a little bit more money, we can actually have them help us with enforcement because our ZRC can't do the enforcement. It's too much work. But they, they can actually generate the letters and, and send out letters to the illegal STRs and saying, you're illegal and this is going to this zoning zoning, zoning review officer, zoning enforcement officer. Yeah, okay, okay, cool. Well, th th thank you, thank you. Um, so I can add a couple words here from, from that. So, okay. Well, I am watching my clock. I think we, we, we didn't get to Jude's topics. <laughs> this all began because Jude can had topics. We, can we just look at number one so we feel like we at least touched it? Because I don't think it's going to be sure. a big deal. Okay. I like well, that. I, sure. I'm down to keep going, you guys. This is important yeah. stuff. I think and so. I don't mind. So, whatever. I'll but yeah, I'm going. here. I think I would keep going too. Uh, okay. So waiting period for new. So this is, um, you know, th th this 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 makes uh, this makes a lot of people cringe. But you know, if we want to avoid the LLC, people buying up properties just to have a revolving door. I, I think three years. You know, people. You know, there's going to be a set of people who aren't going to be happy with me for saying that. I think three years would make people think twice before they bought their property just to be a revolving door. Yeah, I mean, that. I think that's a reasonable amount of time. I mean, you know, aside from conglomerates and, you know, shady LLCs who will come in, who could turn, who could really, you know, turn a home around and for the sake of making it profitable in under three years, if you're not moving here with prospects or, you know, try, or trying to do anything but this. So, yeah, three years is my... I, add my I, I'm, that, I'm good i'm good with three years and with an exception for transfer within close family or inheritance sure right, right, and i agree with that exception is inheritance close right. family defined as spouse right. child parent, I mean, whatever i mean we could also make an argument that there could be an exception for people who have lived in the community for decades like I, there could I, be... I think that's illegal yeah okay i think that's illegal well that doesn't entirely surprise me so <laughs> worth a shot worth a shot yeah so inheritance transfer transfer to immediate family members okay a uh, lottery with yearly permits i um I, I I don't really like that. I I I'm not a fan of that because I think once somebody has um you know once you're in and you've got that income and they say well next year you might not have the income you you, you can you can really have big financial issues. I think people need to, to be able to predict what their income is going to be, and I think the I'm I'm a no for the lottery. Well, well here here let, let me just before you you put that in ink for yourself the lottery i would only really at the moment apply that to non-owner occupied uh owner not on premises as or maybe even owner on premises like we're talking about non-owner occupied uh, or something I'm, I'm still, but I'm still but the idea know. being that uh if you if my understanding was that if you th those cycled around that the people who had them previously and are now having to uh, put them back in the pool could then do one of the owner-occupied options. I, I'm not a fan of lottery. I'm a fan of limiting how long you can do it potentially, but I'm not a fan of lottery. I think the lottery becomes arbitrary 
I think we end up with the New York taxi medallion system, which, you know, if you get lucky, you make a lot of money. If you don't get lucky, you make no money. I don't like the well, lottery. I guess even aside from the lot lottery aside, then we're talking about a, a, where the the permits expire and then you go to the bottom of the list. That, that, that I'm okay with. Yeah, and that to me is the preferable way to do it. I certainly would not like the lottery. I would say, though, I am in, I am in support of not having for life full yeah. home rental the, if if they need to pad their income then they can rent they can do the they can either rent the house long term they can um do the owner in dwelling option you know which will which we were talking about as being a much more universally uh permissible uh way to do it and uh and you can still make more money otherwise you can maybe maybe rent that other home <laughs> that you know b and b that one you know two, two and three kind of come in they're kind of tied together yeah and so you know jeff you had brought this up originally because if 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 we're talking about putting a cap on these it means that not everybody gets to have them probably who wants them given the number that we have right now so the idea was if there's a cap and there's a limit then somebody else gets a turn so then yeah. the idea is how you handle that if it's you know once you once your term is up you get to go back at the bottom of the list and you come up again, that's fine too. These are just questions. These aren't things that anybody's decided. They were just, how do we- Yeah, I, that, I, I like the way you guys described it. You know, it's, it's you get a certain number of years and, you, and you, get, you get to predict your years, whether it's three years or whatever the number of years is, you get to know how long you got it so you can plan for that financially. And then at the end of that, you go to the bottom of the list and then you move your, your way back up again. That's fine with me. Right. So, so why is it that we, I, I'm, it's still disruptive to people. Why is it we want it? Why is it we feel it's okay to be disruptive to people that have their foot in the door? Well, because, because no one else can get in the door. If you know, if we have eleven percent of our housing stock now being rented as short-term rentals, and we are talking about reducing it to some other percentage, that mm -hmm. means not everybody's going to get it. So then, should the lucky people who I don't know how you decide who those first group of people are going to be. And they have it forever and nobody else ever gets a chance. So I think the idea is if you limit the length of it, first of all, it does two things. It, it gives other people an opportunity, but it also, you know, it, it, in a residential neighborhood, you know, this has always been. Whole, can, so can I, just to, but, to, let me just finish. My, my concern has always been in a residential neighborhood. People are running, essentially, they're running hotels. And so. And I know people who live next door to party houses, you know, they're STRs and, you know, and granted, I know there are probably a lot of people on the call who don't do that. So I'm not addressing you, but I'm just saying it happens. And so if you limit it, so in three years, you know, that you don't have to live with that for the rest of your life, you know, it's, they're not your disruptive neighbors forever. And it also gives somebody else an opportunity if we're going to cap it, it's not limited to those first people who got their foot in the door. Other people have an opportunity, and it also gives the neighbors a little breather, honestly. Yeah, and all I wanted to add on to that was, like you said, when we when you allow these things to turn over a bit, I think that can also be a way of addressing this vacancy rate issue that's come up a lot. I mean, that's to me one of the one. I mean, I, and I'm just speaking for myself. It's one of the harder things for me to get my head around. Is, is maintaining that healthy vacancy rate and having this type of man, essentially engineered turnover could probably help that to some extent. So, so, so I, think I, I think I hear three of you saying yes. I think I'm a maybe, but I think I hear three of you saying yes to the limit. I'm definitely yes. Yeah, def, definitely to a limit. I mean, we'll come back to it, but yeah. And how would you that's, you know, whether it's oh. uh, and I and I dislike lottery, I, I don't like the chance. I like I like the predictability. Yeah, right, and, right. and I do want to say I'm mainly talking about non-owner occupied, or rather, uh, what are we calling it now? The, category the, one, the, category one, and category four. Owner, yeah. not, owner, owner not on premise, category one. Owner, owner not yeah, on I'm, premise. I'm talking about uh, owner not on premise, category one, and maybe 
may be owner on premise, depending on where we um, owner on premise, owner occupied number three. So one for sure, maybe three, depending on how we structure that. Um, but like, I'm thinking it's one in four, Connor, that we're talking about. Or it's owner on premise, not same dwelling. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Four is yeah. not the same dwelling. Sorry. One in four. Yes. In four. Oh, my bad. Uh, I yeah. mentioned I had a very painful dental procedure today. My head. Yeah, yeah, you did say you said you're hurt to talk, but you're doing pretty well. So no, it's Good actually job. going okay. I, I I ate a whole can of pineapples before I went in, and I think that uh, helped. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yay! Okay, okay. So uh, do for one and four above, and I'm a maybe of uh, I'm a one zero C member of a maybe. Um. So. I, I do hear what you're saying, and, and like we're saying, it wouldn't be for everything, but um, for a bunch of stuff. Okay. Okay. I, have, to... I think this is where we need, probably should stop. I think so, too. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, this is a big one, but I want to say something here, okay? Because you you know, I've got yeah, just... a whole lot of boards, and I just want to say for all you people who are listening, you know, we're trying to work through it. We haven't had any like backroom conversations. I don't talk to these people at any other time. And we're just trying to have a discussion and work through this and try to figure it out. And you are privy to all of that. So um, that's a really good thing. And it's not that nobody's listening. It's that we have listened a lot. And there's a lot of things that have gone on in this community that maybe haven't taken place in front of this group, but that we're well aware of. And it's not something also unique to Woodstock. This is going on all over the county, all over the country. People are looking at this issue and trying to figure out what to do about it. So I just want to say, I am proud to be here and have these discussions with Laura and Jeff and Connor and Ed when he's here, because we're, you know, nothing is set in stone that we've said tonight. We're, we're thinking it through, we're brainstorming it. And um, anyway, I just, I just want to say that because, you know, it's like people are getting all worked up and, and, um, and I, you know, there'll be an opportunity at some point for everybody to weigh in, but give us a chance to kind of work through it and figure out what we need to do and then how we're going to accomplish it. So that's I, I just want to say uh, I feel exactly the same way, Jude. I'm so proud to serve with you all. And I uh, feel, I mean, don't get, not, no, no, this is in no way a shot to the planning board, but I feel like we have made some incredible uh, strides as a board. I love the way we work as a team. And I think uh, we're going to do good work with this. Yeah, thank well, you. you said, go ahead, I, totally agree, I totally agree with you. It's like it, it, at the beginning of this, Laura said this is the sausage making. So making rules, making laws is a messy, messy, messy pro project. And it looks like shit when you're doing it. Hopefully at the end, we'll come up with something that's reasonable. And even when you do that, it's going to go past a public review. It's going to go past meetings. It's going to go past the town board. We don't make the rules here. We propose the rules. The rules are going to be made by the town board. We're going to propose what we think is right. The town gets to input into what we what we propose. They get to tell us where we're wrong, and I'm sure you will, because that's what happens, and we'll fix where we're wrong. So this is not excluding anybody. And frankly, you guys being able to be here is great for all of us to get to, get to see this sausage. You get to see that we're trying what we're trying to do and how we're trying to do it. And I appreciate everyone listening and being part of this conversation from a hearing point of view. And, you know, we can't have 500 people come up with rules. We can come have, you know, four people do the best they can do, and we'll hear everybody else. And that that's how this works. And, you know, I appreciate you all listening. Thank you. Yeah. And, and I, and I want to say from having worked, our, our ZRC has been together, I don't even know how many years, it's been a bunch of years, and we've tackled some difficult things. And we just persevere through it. We persevere through it. We start having discussions. We come back to discussions. You know, you get a chance to get away for a few weeks. You come back to the next meeting. You, you look through it again. And bit by bit, things get cleaned up really, really well. And I'm extremely pleased to work with this group of people. And we've done some very significant laws. And we're, we're kind of in the beginning of this process. You know, we've done our listening. We've just, this is our first day of deliberations, really. And so we're going to be doing more listening to people. I will stay on. I said at the beginning, I would stay on. And people that want to share some thoughts, uh, there's I, I will be capturing the chat and certainly sending out to the ZRC 
I didn't look at the chat either because if I looked at the chat, I wouldn't be listening to the conversation. So um, in any event, I'll be taking a look at the chat and I'll share it with the ZRC. So I know people had, a, I see 99 plus comments. So people had things to say. So we'll, uh, we'll look at that, but I will stay on. Um, well, let me just ask. So ZRC, are we okay if I start taking questions? Yes, please. So we uh, can okay. get some dinner soon. Uh, okay. <laughs> and, and if ZRC members, I'll be making notes. If, if people feel you've had it, because we've been over the hour and a half. So Lisa, you're, well, you're, you're up, Lisa. Well, My well, first me, question. Can I, I just want to ask really quickly, is this, on we're we're not adjourning the meeting we're going to leave the meeting open for this or well that's we... a, that's a good question i mean because i guess technically speaking once we lose a quorum the meeting's done but i'm still listening so um... so, so that's a, i i mean i'm happy to stick around for a little bit i can't for too long but i think maybe we should formally adjourn the meeting then and just allow the public to keep going is that and, okay and we're, and we're still recording this is still recording and i'm going to be making notes from what people say so I'm happy to do it either either uh, way. Well, well, why why don't I'll we go? Motion to adjourn then. Second. <laughs> motion. Motion. Uh, okay. So so we so we've adjourned. Let me just make a note here. We have adjourned at eight. We didn't have a vote yet, Laura, but. Yes. Well, I think I heard I heard two seconds. <laughs> I heard one person say adjourn, and I heard two people second it. So I think okay, I think fine. we're okay, we're, I think, I think we're, we're, we're adjourned, and my clock says eight thirteen. So I think we're good. But anyway, Lisa, you were first. So my first question is, did you receive Laura and did you pass on to the other ZRC members the email that I sent you a week ago? Uh, you know, I think I did not. I hate to say that's true, but I will look for it and I will pass. And that's from what you presented two, two weeks it ago. It was the slides that we presented that you guys requested. Right. It was the annual calculator to calculate fees that Ed requested. We worked very hard to make it very user friendly. Okay. It was the two studies that we referred to. It was a description of our organization. It was a sheet on understanding STRs and STR owners, and maybe one or two other things. The effort was to help you all with, with information to help you with these discussions because as you can see, it's incredibly complex. So we've been studying this for two years we have so much information. We are asking you guys to read what we send you. Yeah, to totally. Okay, important. so so I I am looking for it right now. So you think you, you sent I it sent it on Tuesday last week, which would have been the sixteenth. Um, this was the sixteenth. Oh, Lisa, there we go. Um, right, January sixteenth. Right. Yeah, and I'm pulling it up right now. Because there's no time like the present. Ah, look at that, that, and that, and that is lovely. And my apologies. Do you want me to? Uh, I, I'm going to do a reply all so that you can see I'm forwarding it. I am forwarding it now, and I'm saying add attachments, and um, and I am so, going to do that. Yeah. So you want to forward it to all the members of the committee who are here or not here. We Correct. also shared it with the other town board members because we believe in transparency. Mm -hmm. So we are completely open and anyone else who wants materials from us we will share them we're not into secrecy we're into transparency right. we're not into randomness we're into looking at for real data and studies okay okay and thank and you I... for doing that laura i know you've got yeah. a lot on your plate <laughs> well, we well i do but, but thank you for being patient thank you thank you for right. being patient so um, I am about to hit send for just a second. Right. Just want to make sure I got everybody on that I mean to. Um, okay. So I a just little, a little earlier in the convert at the very beginning, you said something about public comments. I think on a Facebook page or something. Could you repeat where people can submit their public comments? Well, it's not together yet. I did talk with okay. Supervisor McKenna, and he thought that it would be possible to have a Facebook topic that people could add on to. On the on the Wishdock on the town of Wishdock Facebook page. So looking for that on the town of Wishdock Facebook page, it is not together yet. So we should just okay. So will be will it be convenient? Oh, it'll just be on the Facebook page whenever well, it appears. You know, one one well. thing I would add to that on the top on the thing about Facebook topics, making sure that people can submit anonymously. You know, I mean, I'm sure there are people who will want to, you know, share their stories that may feel a little vulnerable about, you know, sharing an experience about homelessness or something like that and making sure that it's not 
all just a public bulletin board and that there is a way to also take private messages, I think is something we should impart to the supervisor. Um, I, I guess I'm thinking about that. Uh, it, is there a way, I mean, if people want to be anonymous and, and I'm not a Facebook expert, um, but is there a way if people want to be anonymous, perhaps they might want to have their input only viewed by like the owners of the Facebook page, but kind of you're saying that you think that you think it's important to have a way to have somebody anonymously post. So that no, no, no. What I'm saying is, is that a Facebook topic is sometimes an open forum. It's like you can put it out there and people can comment it on it like you would a post and that's fine. We can totally do that and have a bulletin board style thing where anyone can come and share their story. I just think, maybe tethering it to a separate page or a group where there is also an additional option not to share anonymously because if you can you can't really we can't just take anonymous feedback because it could be from anyone from anywhere genuine or not you know so the idea is that if people just don't want to share their story on the public page so that everyone can see it they just want to share it with the town with this deliberative body that there is a pipeline that does not post their submission for everyone to see if they want that i just want to encourage more participation from people who may feel some sensitivity about you could right. send an email you could put an email in there and, and have someone be able to send it through an email address you could have yeah, it, as it, it exactly you could have you could create an email address you could have a facebook page mm -hmm. and just say private message this page whatever it is all i'm saying is having a, a, a an avenue where we uh where we can take it directly and not share it with the world but right. And, and it's interesting because I think part of what people wanted is that they wanted to have a place where everybody could see what everybody was saying. But you're right. Some people might want the privacy. Right. That's it. Thank you. So so anyway. OK, so uh, Lisa, you're good. We'll go to Claudia. Yeah, go ahead. OK, I first of all, I really, really appreciate you guys spending the, the amount of detail. You've thought about this a lot. And, and I really appreciate that. Um, so thank you. Um, I have very strong feelings about this, having been a resident for 45 years about how this thing should move. However, I also um, am incredibly data-driven. And I was wondering in two fronts, whether we have the data of what the trends are for both traffic, you know, like where the traffic's been, the, the trends in terms of what we're seeing in terms of the STRs, and maybe if we could see some of that data, you know, and parse that, that would be interesting. And then also any like um, counties that are doing, that are thinking about ways to, however you want to call it, limit, restrict, you know, I'm trying to find a kind of neutral way of saying this, that has been effective in, in, are we looking at those? As um, if I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Were, were you no, done? No, go ahead. Oh, if I could just jump in and answer that really quick. So we uh, we have, uh, Laura mentioned at the beginning of this meeting, we have a number of documents from different interested parties, including the members of the WSTRA, who are mostly in the comment section tonight, um, that attack this issue from multiple different uh, perspectives. I'm sure uh, it would not be uh, a, a trouble to forward you that information if you request it. Um, and in terms of other counties, it's really for us more like other towns, uh, yeah. but we are looking at Kingston, we're looking at uh, Hurley, there's NYC, and there are examples all over the country, including places like Louisiana and California. So uh, just to echo, you know, what was said by uh, everyone in the board at the end of the meeting today is about us uh, trying to process that information to each other. This is all going to be done in public. And this is us uh, not reaching consensus on what the law is going to be right now. But what is the information we have and what do we make of it? 
Um, and that's how I see it. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, the thing that I'm just kind of sensitive to is that I want to make sure that it's that it's going to be as simple as possible for the town to enforce so that we can get to the goal that we want to get to, hopefully, of like keeping the community of Woodstock alive. And so the sim, you know, it's like, I just want to make sure that we're making it easy for when you guys move on that the next people will take that on it, it's totally a concern of ours and you should definitely keep showing up because this is the beginning of a process okay yeah okay. And, and Claudia, I, I do agree with you in that one of the things i've been asking for and i hope we can get is where are the concentrations where are they located you know where are the legal ones where are the illegal ones it would be and i you know but the problem is this we are, uh, we still are a small town with relatively small staff. And so, you know, if we go to the building department and say, can you give us this? You know, they're already, you know, way over their heads with the things that they are required to do. So I would love to know exactly what we have and where it is. And, you know, maybe there's a way for us to figure that out somehow, but I agree with you. You know, the more we know, the better it would be for everybody. But I think, you know, there's there there have been comments that like, why can't we have this? And why can't because there's a whole bunch of volunteers out there and not so much paid staff that are really overworked already. So um, but I agree with you, the more information we have, the better it will be. And I could raise my hand to build anything into Excel if it will be helpful for anyone or into any kind of data if there's no time for people. So so Jude, what we can do, what I think we could do is we can talk to the county and have them, you know, we could have a, we could, we could, we could look at, I've seen, I've seen the county's display, Ulster County wide of legal and illegal STRs. It's, it's shocking. Truthfully, it's shocking. There are significantly more illegal ones than there are legal ones in the county. Significantly okay. more. I'm sure. And, and so it shows up on a map and you can, I can do a deep dive into every single address on that map and see who the owner is, how many times it's been STR'd in, in the year, and whether it's legal or illegal. And it's it's shocking how many illegals there are. So so my understanding, Jeff, was that that information, that we can't have it because there's privacy issues. But what I'm wondering is, can we have the generalized version? You know, like, okay, there's one here, there's one here, and we don't have names, we don't have specific addresses, but we have a general like idea. Like kind of do it by district or by town, not by address. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll ask I'll ask the county exec her, her department to see if I can get access to that data. Um, great. And what we can what we can share. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, great maybe, idea. Yeah, that would be excellent. Yeah, yeah. So thank thank you, Jeff. Whatever you can find out would be great. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're lucky to have Jeff in the county. We're lucky to have Jeff for a lot of reasons, but we're very lucky to have Jeff in the county for us. Yes. <laughs> There Sounds are good. three studies, um, links in the chat right now with data in them. Thank you. Okay, so I will pull the chat when we're, as we're done, I will pull the chat. Uh, did, did anybody else want to speak? Um, if, okay. Oh, I see Roxanne has her uh, hand up. I just had a question. I, I was just trying to understand what the, like what are the goals of this um, regulation, like what are you trying to achieve? Um, that would be really helpful to know. I, I think from my mind, and this is a personal goal, so I'm not, we haven't talked about this in general, maybe we should do that. But to me, I'm trying to balance the use of occupants of, of dwellings in this town between long-term residents and the short-term residents that come in that we need. We're, we're, we are a tourist town. We do, we do need to provide access to tourists to be able to come here because our economy is somewhat based on tourism. You know, if you look at the restaurants, you look at the people who work in the restaurants, there is a need to have a certain number of tourists be able to come into town. At the same time, we don't want to lose what this town has had, which is that it's been a community that people have grown up in. And many people can't live here anymore. So that's that's what we're trying to balance is those two needs of of being a community, knowing your neighbor, knowing you you know having your kids be able to grow up here and live here, and support a, a basic tourism economy that we have. It's a tough thing to do, 
And that's why I think why it's been so challenging to come up with this, how to do this, because we do need STRs. I mean, we need them. We can't just ban them. We do need them because we need that kind of level of, of visitors coming in. But we also don't want to lose who we are. We don't want to lose the ability to have someone grow up in the town. Yeah, and, uh, I, and yeah. I, agree, I, I agree with that. And if I could just say, too, uh, one of the issues that we've had is we're losing all of a sudden when you have all these revolving doors, nobody joins the fire department and nobody joins. You know, this town runs on volunteers. And it's so important. The balance Jeff is talking about is so important because we need the people that are full timers here because that's what makes Woodstock Woodstock. Um, but as Jeff says, the balance and making sure we have some support for the tourism industry because we don't have a lot of hotels right here. And it's nice for people to be able to come stay in town. It keeps the scent, the heart of Woodstock alive. Um, so I think I'm repeating what Jeff said, but I think Jeff did say it very well. You know, and for again, I could I could definitely just second everything Jeff said on the personal side, but I would just echo his opening remarks was at some, even at a really just like black and white level. It's about examining the change in use of our residential neighborhoods yeah. broadly. Essentially, our res up there, and again, it's checkered. It's different. At like like Jeff said, you can look at a map and see it very plainly. Um, I don't have access to that map, but one could. And um, but you feel it, and you feel it in the fabric of the town. So it's really about the use uh, residential areas as being as having their use changed from residential areas to spot zone commercial zones i agree so that, with you. sorry oh, yep Jude. Well, i agree with you connor i think that's a big thing but you know laura i think very early on we did we did enumerate some goals and mm -hmm. that you know and so maybe we have to go back and look at those again because that seems like months ago now <laughs> it does it does seem like months ago so yeah, right, right. Find our original goals. That's it. I, I'm sure. I'm sure if I look, I'll find them. Thank you so much. That was that was very helpful. And I think yeah, it's always good to like have the goals to orient yourself. I just have one follow up question, which is, you know, you were like obviously all of this is just in the deep brainstorm sausage making process, but there were just some numbers like one percent, two percent turn uh, thrown out, and I think understanding to your guys's point that like part of the towns basic it like a lot of what the town is based on is like tourism right it's like the most famous small town in america and so reducing the number of strs to such a significant degree like i'm just wondering if there's data on what a healthy like the healthy balanced number is of like rental properties if you want to call them whatever um, like, it, to it, um, it, it, like the need of like to how many tourists are sort of like needed to keep the town afloat. I'm wondering if you have that information. Well, it, no. If I could just touch on that really quickly, um, in terms of a tourist number, no, though I don't think, you know, I'm not worried about bottlenecking tourism. We are uh, ubiquitous in music, in culture, and it's what it's part of the draw. Um, but when it comes to, um, say what where do we get those numbers from again um i we're we we it may seem like we're just throwing a bunch of stuff out but like i had mentioned to um to claudia earlier um we have uh we've had multiple presentations from uh different parties uh some of them more in alignment with each other than others and numbers that keep getting thrown out as healthy uh sort of more standard for at least what I would, again, and, and I'm, I'm speaking from my perspective, what I would consider these entire home rentals, uh, if we were you looking at the document, which I'm not, I can only see you, I believe was item number one, um, which is the idea of a home just being completely off the market. That number was, they were saying 1% of rentals is a healthy number to be dedicated to that. Now, the, the more ethereal number that I think is just as important but harder to kind of work directly at is the vacancy rate. Having a 5% vacancy rate of all units 
in the town is is actually good for a community it is good to have homes available so that as people need them they are available um so that and and just to again nothing's being written in stone right now but it's just if we were to say that that is the what we'll say is one percent of this type of str we are then looking at these other three that could be more permissible i'm not I, this is a very hyperbolic thing i'm about to say but like you could imagine a world where anyone and everyone could rent a room in their house as long as they are present while that room is being rented specifically i'll say in the dwelling to me all the boxes are checked you have a home being lived in year round commute the community is you know you participating in the community and you and and yes you have the same transient business uh and the benefits of the str but the home is occupied it's not an empty home where either no one or someone less invested in the outcome is accountable among other concerns yeah so so i think that what so so summarize i think because we have we're looking at we had the four types we're talking about some types keep the community healthy because the it, it's owner occupied the residents you know the person's here when they're renting out that, that's that's healthy for the community uh, as Connor says let's avoid the revolving door but the other thing is uh, there's some litmus tests and when Urena talked um I think it was two meetings ago and she talked about you know what's the vacancy rate of long-term rentals you know we hear about you know we hear the horror stories about people who are renting their apartment and they get kicked out because the owner wants to do a short-term rental because it's more lucrative. So, you know, part of it is not numbers that we have, but it's what we're hearing and we hear the horror stories. And um, so we need to weigh in that even though we don't have numbers for it. And, and the other thing is if you if you read in the papers, the ads in the paper of the vacancy, you're looking for an apartment and people, the prices are out of, are skyrocketing. So, it, you know, the fact that all these things are taken up by STR is causing is part of a problem so so we even though we don't have perfect numbers we're hearing things that help us understand the situation i just want to uh, 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 yeah jude why don't you jude, go ahead and i'll go to i'll go yeah. dorothy after jude sorry i i just want to agree with what connor said but also it's one percent of our total housing stock i think you said okay that. not just not just rentals but one housing. Percent of total housing stock. and you know and, and i understand no, no, I, I understand what people, you know, people, I understand people's concerns, but this is something now that we have experienced. I remember when I went to the public hearings when the town was first considering this law, and I remember raising concerns that are the same concerns we have today, but nobody really had that crystal ball back then. A few of us could sort of see the train going in that direction. And now we've seen it. We've done it. We've seen it. We've seen, we've, we see where it's gone. And we know that it needs to get dialed back. It, it, just, it has not been, it, on an individual basis, for some people, maybe it's been a positive thing. But overall, for the whole community, what's going on in Woodstock right now, whether it's over 500 or whatever it is, close to 600, whatever the number is, it doesn't really matter. 11% of our housing stock, it's not been good for Woodstock. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so you know, if you look at the path we've been on, right? I moved here in 99 when this was in a deep economic depression, this area. Right, and and we've gone from having one single restaurant in town when they moved here, to having lots and lots of restaurants, all of which most people can't afford. <laughs> there you right? go. <laughs> so that's, you know, we slid from one extreme to the other extreme. We got to get someplace in the middle. That that's you know, my my ability to buy a restaurant meal at a reasonable price in Woodstock might be the thing that I care about most. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> So Dorothy thank had you. her hand. Dorothy thank had her hand up. Well, yeah, I, I really like, um, you know, what Connor and others were saying about the community and and what you were saying, Laura, about, you know, the volunteers and, and so on and, and having the quality of life. I just wonder about the increase in the number of uh, weekend people who got houses, especially since the pandemic. And um, that would put pressure on the sense of community and... Um, you know, not having the volunteers and so on. So it's not just the STRs, right? Um, that's creating this problem. And if, if you've thought about mm -hmm. that impact also. 
Well, and that was a great point that was raised because I know the WSHAC SCR Association presented to us at our meeting two weeks ago. And that was an excellent point. It's not just SCRs that's causing the housing crisis. You're totally right on. COVID happened. Everybody wanted to get out of the city. Supply and demand. The demand already went sky, went, all of a sudden it went sky high here because everybody's trying to leave the city. So it's, so SCRs is not the only factor, um, but we need to, I like Jeff's word balance from before. So, you know, we, we're, we're doing our best to find balance. Yeah, it, it's it's not either or. It's walking and chewing gum because you know this, like she said, requires its own balance. But it it does it it is a driver. Not I I wouldn't say anyone would say it's the outright cause of the housing crisis. There is no silver bullet for the housing crisis. The school is not coming back. You know, like we have to change. We have to adapt. And our hope is. My hope, at least, I should say, is that we come out of this with an even more permissive landscape for people to participate in this venture that still respects the integrity of our neighborhoods. And even beyond the community, like the community is, 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 of course, personal and cherished, but even the on, on the maps, the black and white of residential areas as being residential areas i think and i think it can be both i think we really can strike a better bargain here that will allow more people to participate yeah okay uh lisa's got something else would it be possible to include in the str distinctions which you started working on tonight things like short-term rentals that used to be long-term rentals like that would be a really useful distinction to make anything well, that has was a long term that changed or i'm not sure how we would do that was, well you know, let's not, figure it out it'd, it'd be because that you because, because there's question. a lot of complaints about people who are living somewhere and all of a sudden it turns into an str and it used to be a long-term rental and they get cut down they get kicked out figure, the let's figure out wait, wait, how wait. to find out those people should not have str permits those owners well, well, uh, Jeff, did, were, were you saying something just now? I, 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 it would be an interesting question to figure, to, to figure out. If we, could, if we could figure it out, how to figure that out, it would be an inter interesting question. Yeah. I, don't know yeah. I, I certainly yeah. agree. I'm not yeah. certainly not saying it wouldn't be. I don't know how we would do it. But believe me, I'm sensitive that I think the last time y'all were here, I shared my version of that story. Right. Uh, and, the th and so the thing is, and I, again, counter to what some of the comments were saying like this is not about punishment this is not or i shouldn't say it's not just about punishment uh, and punishment is an extension of enforcement maybe but to me what's more important is to and and don't get me wrong if there were if there's a way we can do that jeff i, I imagine you would be the best person to ask that question at the county level you know but mm -hmm. yeah yeah so, yeah, so so well put, I just think I also am interested in just getting these numbers together because rather than who did what could, and whether or not we can retroactively bar them from participating because of well, that, which I don't know that we could legally, um, I I just want to see this, again, the balance restored, not, not I, I, for the sake of punishing or excluding. Yeah, if I could just say too, I, I do think, you know, just because I was doing the right thing for all those years as a long-term rental person, it's kind of like punishing me because all these other people are doing STRs, but I can't. And I kind of think it's more fair to do what we we're talking about before is if we if we do have, say, three years and then you're at the bottom of the list. So you give different people a turn. So I, I don't know, is it be fair to say, hey, you're a long-term renter, so you never get a turn to have short-term rentals. Uh, we're only giving the turn to the people that have never been long-term. So it's kind of like punishing good behavior in a way. I'm just I'm just looking for ways to find more housing stock. Everyone's complaining well, well, yeah. that not uh, enough uh, housing uh, stock. The bottom line is housing that... stock is is are properties that are available year round. Housing stock is not a property where people go a few months a year. You know, they like me, I go whenever I can. But that will never be available for a year. And there are people like that. 
And if we cannot have STRs, it will not give you any more housing stock. It will not give Woodstock more housing stock. So let's let's I, find but, the but, housing but, stock and focus on that as part of the STR law. If that's if that's the goal. I, I think our goal is to address the STR law. Like uh, looking at it through the lens of community development and the lens of the very real housing crisis. Right, is, housing exactly. Is is of course would not it would be a dereliction of our responsibilities to not consider these things but again this is not where we are going to, our goal here is not to solve the housing crisis it's to rebalance the str law and to do so in a way that is conscious of the problems that both surround it and are promulgated by it so the goal there is no goal around helping support the housing there are the housing committee the housing committee is a hundred percent focused on that so the there are so there is the housing committee in Woodstock a hundred percent focused on trying to get more housing the housing oversight task force of which Jeff and I were both members of has proposed a law for the sole purpose well helping the environment protect the environment but also getting more housing so the goal of the zoning revision committee we've been tasked with with addressing, with, with reviewing the current STR law and proposing updates to make it better for Woodstock. So our mission right now is specifically STRs. There is what well, we do. There's a side benefit. We think it's going to help housing. But but yes. So our primary mission we've been tasked with looking at STRs, and that is our primary mission. Whereas the Housing Oversight Task Force was 100% on housing, but doing it in an environmental way, and the Housing Committee is 100% on housing, looking at different uh, different initiatives um with zoning being one of them so okay. we're the zoning revision and, committee and, and the zoning and, and str changes are not going to fix the housing problem we know that but they can't it's not it's not going to fix the housing problem we need to build more houses i mean that, that's yeah. the bottom somehow we need to build more houses in this town that are affordable i don't know how to do that you can't necessarily do that as a town you can't town cannot build housing just can't do it so we have to encourage other people to build housing in this town that's affordable um, the other thing that's, that's paradoxical about this whole scenario is that we have 10% less population than we had eight, 40 years ago. You know, in 1980, we had 600 more people living in this town than live here today. So how did, you know, the problem is not necessarily even housing. It might be age. We're old. We're 62. Um, we're old. I'm the average age, I'm 62 years old. I'm younger than the average age of Woodstockers. <laughs> you're, you're a, yeah, a young Jeff. Imagine how I feel. <laughs> I know, exactly. Exactly. So, that, that's, that's, that's the other thing that we need to work. You know, it's a whole different issue than STRs, but yeah, yeah. it's impacted somewhat. Yeah. There, are, there are other issues around STRs besides the affordable housing issue absolutely. So absolutely i know you know that you're saying that this is not going to affect that but there and that's why i said if we could go back to our goals there were other other issues that short-term rentals of impact in this town that maybe won't produce more long-term rentals but there are other issues and, and that's why we're working on this i agree with you Jude. absolutely yes agree. yeah mm -hmm. Well, we've uh, we, this is a this is our most marathon meeting that I can recall. We've been two hours and fifteen minutes. Nice. We, we don't usually go quite this long, but we're uh, but all all good conversations. And uh, thank you all for the interest. There's a lot of interest in this, and people giving heartfelt uh, thoughts and recommendations because we're all trying to we're all trying to get it right, and it's a process that's still going on. So well, th um, well thank you, Laura and Jeff and Jude for staying totally. too. Is, you know this is it's so important and uh it's, i'm sure everyone appreciates it definitely definitely so yeah <laughs> good thank you I, I well i know we adjourned we adjourned half we're an hour adjourned. ago we could but, just, but now we're, we could just but now whenever. we're, we're now really, really really adjourned we're really really leaving so i'm capturing i'm capturing the chat um and then i'll be closing the meeting after that so thank okay, you everybody thanks. good night No, we have a couple of people left here.
I'm still capturing chat here. You know, there's those three little dots on the bottom where you can just click on click on them and then right click on save chat and then it. Oh, honey. <laughs> well, mine shows mine not see showing that? save chat. Yeah, mine uh, on on the right the, the dots say chat show chat previews pause recording stop recording captions. So I'm not seeing a. Oh, that's weird. Mine has three dots and. If if I if I click on it, it says save. The only option is save the chat, and I click on that. Well, you, well, you know what? It, it may be because I'm the host. It oh. may be that it's actually automatically saved for me. So maybe it's not giving me a choice because maybe it maybe it's automatically saved. So yeah. could 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 be, and you, you, you never know. So right. Okay, I think we're good. I'm signing off. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.